Where else did you see a goat being crowned king of the town? Nowhere else, actually, is the answer to that. <laughs> the fundamental part of the business that I enjoy most is the start-up. It's getting new business. It's pulling it all together to make it all happen. You begin to realise when you come to my age in life that money is not all that important. Not many people have a career in medicine and then a career in business. The transition has been interesting. I've realised that an idea, while it's an important part of a business, a good idea is not going to necessarily make you a millionaire, that's for sure. 24 nominees, 24 stories of business excellence, all competing to become the EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2016. Athlone Extrusions manufactures plastic sheets used in products from machinery to baths. The thriving 40-plus-year-old business has turnover in excess of 62 million euro and has been a lifetime's work for local lad Jimmy McGee. We're actually here in Loch Bree now. If you look in the background, you will see this uh, island down before. That's an, an, an island called Inch Turk. That's where my dad left uh, in 1949 and came to the mainland. And if you look here, you will see the old house. That's the house he built in 1940. When you get on the water and you get out here, everything just vanishes away, and it's the place where you can do your real thinking here. Looking at this, it's a little piece of heaven, isn't it? You know, where would you get anything like it? Unfortunately, I suppose I say, I don't get as much time, and maybe that's wrong to say, I don't make as much time as I really should make to get out onto the Shannon. For me, I didn't get the opportunity of going to second level education. I left school at a very young age uh, before I reached my 12th birthday I had left school and that was uh, I should say more of necessity. My dad had died and I was quite young. I was, uh, I was 15 months old when my dad died and I was the youngest of four and the oldest being six and a half. Of course I would always say an education is no load to carry. I would dearly love to have got that education but one should not see as education something that can that stop you from doing what you want to do. Life is a great education. Athlone Extrusions covers a five acre site in the heart of the town, turning granular beads into sheets of plastic in anything up to 13,000 colours. The sheets are then used in a myriad of products. So if you look at all the dash here, which might look to some people to be leather, it's not, it's actually plastics. We do all this uh, interior trim that's here, of the, the doors here and the front dash that's here, and uh, parts of the roof that's here, it's, it's all plastic. And uh, if you look at uh, uh, the, some of the materials that's here, you will see this bright red that's here. Uh, primarily, you'd look at that and say it's made in steel. This is plastic, which we actually manufacture in Athlone for Manitoul in France. I don't see myself as an entrepreneur. I see myself as more the wheeler-dealer type. You know, I get a great buzz of buying and selling. And it doesn't stop at the plastic. Jimmy successfully floated Athlone Extrusions in 1998, completing an extraordinary feat of bringing the company from receivership to public ownership. Four years later, when it looked like the new owners might move the business out of Ireland, he bought it back again. We bought the business back so we'd retain the jobs and the people that was there and I always believed the business had still a lot of potential to grow and develop there. We spend 9.3 million in the local economy. 7.3 of that comes from wages and salaries and about 2 million comes from where the local spend of suppliers who supply us and uh, that puts 9.3 of a spend in the Greater Athlone area. In another time, farming might have been Jimmy's calling. Today, the farm is managed by his son Enda and Jimmy gets the benefit of walking the land without having to work it every day. You begin to realise when you come to my age in life that money is not all that important. You know, you can only eat one dinner, you can only sleep in one bed. And, you know, I think if you're prepared to get up and go and do, do things, you can always make money for yourself. And, uh, you know, you don't make a god out of that. It's important to enjoy it as well. So for me, the simple life out on the farm, the country music and the bit of fishing, you know, for me, that's, uh, that's just heaven. And, you know, they don't cost a fortune. Kieran O'Keefe's Mobile Web Ads is a technology company that harnesses the power of the internet on mobile devices for advertisers. 
Regularly hopping between the company's 11 worldwide locations, from Japan to California, there are still some things that will always get Kieran on a plane home to the kingdom. So, look, I'm a proud carryman. I come back minimum three times a year. It's easy for me because uh, Farm 4 is so quick from, from London. Um, the, the main events, obviously, are the standard come home for Christmas time, and then the big event of the year in Kilorton, where I'm from, is Puck Fair, which is very much about the locals as much as the tourists. So people come from all over the world back to their hometown and you're guaranteed to meet all the people that, that you grew up with. I've seen this happen about 25 times. I was very involved as a young person. Don't go back as often as I should do, but uh, I need to come back because this is spectacular. Where else did you see a goat being crowned king of the town? Nowhere else actually is the answer to that. <laughs> like the cute Kerry man he is, Kieran grew the business with no funding capital and in the face of deep pocketed competition from Google, Apple and Facebook. Now across 130 countries worldwide, mobile web ads formats and serves up 45 billion ads each month. In a nutshell, our business is almost like a stock market for ads. There are thousands and thousands of mobile websites all over the world, thousands and thousands of advertisers who want to put their ads on those websites. We're the big stock exchange platform, marketplace, whatever you want to call in the middle, where these guys who've got the website say, I want an ad, I'm building a page all in real time, and I want an ad for this, for this, um, for this page so I can make some money. That's how they monetize their, their, their content. You're used to browsing Facebook for free, you're used to browsing the Carrymen for free. Somebody has to pay the bills and it's advertising that pays the bills. Advertisers log onto their account, upload their ads and choose which consumers to target. Kieran's company then ensures the ad is delivered to the right mobile device in the most engaging way. The reason that we're successful is this service, there are lots of competitors, but the reason that we're successful is largely because we've done the Irish thing of seeing no place as inaccessible or, you know, no place that won't respond to our charm type thing. <laughs> In 2014, with takeovers on the table and Kieran's first child on the way, a sudden business downturn hit Kieran unexpectedly and very personally. So it all came to a head. I was in a dark, dark place. You know, all of the pressures, the stresses, the people shouting at me, you know, you said it was going to be this big and it's not this big and investors and everybody coming to me for answers and solutions and I didn't really have any immediately and I said look there is no immediate solution but it did affect me personally I, I got a very bad bout of depression I doubled down just just gritted my teeth and uh, with the help primarily of my family we came through and then of course the real thing that brought me all was having my first baby you know um, I'm not the youngest guy in the world and a lot of people have kids a lot, lot younger than me and, and I was genuinely petrified beforehand going from a situation where I only had me and my wife to look after to this beautiful baby boy that, that came into the world. It was a lot to, to have to, to, to face up to, but I think, you know, he did. We pulled each other through it, I think. I like to think, anyway. And definitely when we come out the other side with Sean Oak being there, it's just tremendous. You know, you have, you look at life and you think of it in a completely different way, and there's nothing that can be bad, you know. And you think about every risk you're taking or making, and it's, it's for him as well. And that he gets to see and be part of the adventure and so you just you just get on with it. Q1 Scientific is the latest startup for serial entrepreneur Louise Grubb. The company provides world-class environmentally controlled storage for drug samples. Doubling sales every year, Q1's giant fridges for the pharma industry are at play in a sector worth tens of millions. I didn't set out to be an entrepreneur. I just set out with an idea that I think this could work. And I had a marketing background and a science background as well. So those combined, I thought, look, let's put a business plan together and see if we can make this happen. The fundamental part of the business that I enjoy most is the startup. It's getting new business. It's pulling it all together to make it all happen. And um, I thrive on that and I really enjoy it. It's less work to me. It's really just fun. As an entrepreneur, I created my own business, but I also created my own terms, my own conditions. So it gives me a lot of freedom. I also set up a lot of the businesses when my children were young, and I've been able to sort of, you know, work my lifestyle around it. After relocating with her family to her native Waterford, Louise found that her best career options lay in her own hands. 
When you move outside of Dublin, there's not a lot of executive positions and in one way it gave me the opportunity to set up a business and in another way it was a fantastic opportunity to be able to create something for myself and to live where I want to live. And I suppose that's what's really important about our homegrown entrepreneurs. You know, you find the place where you want to live and then you create your business there. And no matter what obstacles are in the way, you make sure that it's going to work from here because this is where you want to be. With Q1 Scientific, if you wanted to set up a, a national centre where you're trying to bring in samples, probably you wouldn't choose Waterford if you were doing a location grid. But it works, you know, it, it works. We've got good logistics from here and you can make it work. When you're 18 and you're in a small little town in Ireland, you just can't wait to leave. And then you turn around years later with your own family and think, wasn't that idyllic, you know? And I have to say, I've never looked back since we moved back here and we'll stay here now. So we enjoy breeding horses. It's lovely this time of year, particularly when you have the foals. So we have a couple of mares and we breed show jumping and venting horses. Um, and it's a really enjoyable pastime. Some of them we give to some of the professional riders to produce um, if, they're, if they're good enough to go jump at an international level. We give them on to some of the professional riders to, to take them that far. For Louise and husband John, who's a vet, the sideline has already had considerable success, with one of their horses, Imperial Cavalier, winning rosettes on the world stage. A great sense of pride in having produced ones that are good when you see them jumping on the team. We were lucky enough to have one horse jump in the last Olympics and won a medal but on the British team. He won a team silver medal and he was fifth placed individually. With three successful businesses and counting, Louise is both familiar with and fond of the startup phase. She's determined to encourage others too, like those attending this evening's Enterprise Board event. So it's really nice, kind of casual networking event. I'm the speaker this evening, so I'm just going to talk to them a little bit about my story and also about the Entrepreneur of the Year, which is a different journey again. I get involved with quite a lot of, I suppose, mentoring and groups to encourage startups. And a lot of it is just sharing my experience of, you know, how I got to be here with another group. And I think that's very, you know, very valuable. From global think tanks like the OECD to the next generation of entrepreneurs, there's a growing awareness of the positive impact diversity in the workplace can have on a business and its bottom line. There's a business case for the national economy, and that's where if we grow entrepreneurial activity through the various missing entrepreneurs, such as immigrants, women, youth, seniors, people with disabilities, unemployed, then that grows our, our enterprises across the country, which is really positive. But there's also a business case for business organisations. By employing this diverse range of people, that it aids creativity, it aids productivity. So there is a bottom line benefit beyond the feel-good factor of having a diverse workforce. Creating a culture where people feel able to be themselves absolutely generates happy stuff and, and a better working environment. But this is a business benefit. And so grab the hearts and minds and the bottom lines uh, and the imaginations of the board members and really drive this from the top. Shabra in County Cavan is the biggest plastics recycling plant of its kind in Ireland. And Rita Shah, MD of the company, has a unique angle on the advantages of diverse perspectives in the workplace. I come from Kenya where I've seen poverty and I think it has helped me through this journey of my business. So I have never felt that uh, gender, colour, creed, culture, social has never really worried me. I always try to get the best out of a person. Well there's very little hierarchy in this company. I just feel that everybody works to the same goal. Uh, that means that really, you know, we're all Indians and they're no chiefs. In large organisations working in international markets, it's easier perhaps to see the advantage of diversity of opinion and expertise. But the principles of inclusion are the same. It's not a nice to have. It's not something that, that you know, we've, we've just said, oh, let's be diverse. It's something that's core and critical 
to, to what we do here. I mean, I think without the creativity, without the multicultural team that we have, the diversity that we have here, we wouldn't have a team. In exactly the same way as businesses diversify their products, they change what they do, they change what they offer their clients, their customers, so should they change the way that they work. So we all start to adopt technology to develop better solutions, more efficient solutions. Why not adopt a difference in the way that we work with the type of people that we work with to create those efficiencies, to create those innovations and those new ideas? If you harness all of that in a proactive, positive way. You're tapping into communities that are beyond your group think, and that has market opportunities and bottom line opportunities. It's a difficult time in the taxi industry, but iCabby's dispatch and booking management software could provide the taxi business with a new lease of life. It's the brainchild of Gavin Walsh, whose growing business regularly takes him stateside. Every city that I travel to, I always take taxis. Talking to the drivers, that's where you understand what's going on in each city. So in, in the US, they estimate that there's 489,000 uh, limo and taxi uh, drivers in, in, in the whole of the US. Uber's taken 169,000 of them. So they've effectively taken a quarter of the market in, in the four or five years that they've been operating which is unbelievable. You know, although that's bad for the taxi industry, on the flip side of that is there's still 75% of the market and uh, my business is giving those guys the technology that they need to compete. iCabby's dispatch technology offers taxi companies a full suite of products hosted in the cloud. It seamlessly integrates the everyday activities of busy taxi firms with customer needs. Today we're in VIP Taxis, they're a 400 car company based in Dublin. Uh, they were one of our first uh, major fleets that we built a system for back in 2012. So we basically moved their entire business into the cloud, focusing on mobile technology and really giving them a full end-to-end -end solution. We've grown from the 400 cars that we had back in 2012 uh, to a staggering uh, 35,000 now. That's going to be set to be at about 54,000 by the end of the year. Uh, so, you know, what we've done is we've built a very robust platform. The kernel of the business idea came to Gavin when he and wife Joanne got lost while out walking on holidays. The app he imagined that day became iCabby and has grown along with the two other members of the family. I started a, a serious business the same time that I started a family and that definitely came with difficulties. You know, you're, I went from probably earning more money in my 20s than I, do, than I do now, but obviously it's about risk and reward and the rewards are coming. It's an incredibly difficult journey. There's so many highs and lows, and what you need is somebody behind you that's going to be supporting you, particularly through the lows, and they're going to celebrate the wins with you as well. So I'm very lucky to have my beautiful wife, Joanne, through it all, from the day one when the idea came up uh, to today when, you know, we're, we're looking at a very bright future. With business doubling every six months, iCabby is on the move. The new offices are the former HQ of Superquin, one of Ireland's and Holt's great business successes. Oh, if the walls could talk. Holt has been an integral part of our business. We started out with a small office with just three of us in Abbey Street in Holt. Now we're only moving down to Sutton Cross, 6,300 square foot, going to give us loads of room to grow. And we have an option on the second floor, so now we've just got to think as big as we can. I used to really think that getting the right idea, you'd be a millionaire a year later. After iCabby came about, which is a great idea, and the hard work of building a business, I've realised that an idea, while it's an important part of a business, a good idea is not going to necessarily make you a millionaire, that's for sure. Founded in 2006 by obstetrician Suresh Tharma and facial surgeon Ashok Sangra, 352 is the largest independent healthcare provider in Northern Ireland. The company comprises a suite of complementary businesses providing healthcare from conception to end of life. So this is the Lisbon Road in Belfast and it's where I suppose it all started uh, in 2004. It was at a time when I was looking for to start a, a medical chambers in Belfast, which was a relatively new concept at the time. 
and we found this house, which uh, didn't look like this then. We walked in, we immediately noticed the potential of what it could be transformed into, and 35 to Lisbon Road is how it all started, and the name has stuck ever since. Ashok was one of the first tenants in Lisbon Road. As well as sharing a business premises, he found he shared a similar outlook on the future of healthcare delivery with Suresh also. Our innovative model was to actually use downtime in NHS facilities to actually do extra work at no cost to the government or the NHS. But strangely enough, actually, because we were renting space out of ours, we were actually delivering actually more funds into the NHS, yet at the same time delivering the very care they were providing funding for. So almost called a discounted care. The pivotal moment for the company came in 2011 when they opened Kingsbridge Private Hospital. Sharing the helm at the diverse business requires more than just a good bedside manner. Well, it has to be the right chemistry for a start and call it fortuitous or whatever. But you know, you work at the relationship, you work at making sure that we're both thinking along the same lines. We have different skill sets and I think that's really important in anything you do. I have a lot of deficiencies <laughs> and uh, also uh, a lot of uh, strengths. I think we definitely complement each other in that aspect. We all have ideas, we have vision and so on, and it's really important to challenge each other. One thing they certainly agree on is that technology will play an important part in the future of the business. Dotcom Doctor is a venture into the provision of healthcare remotely a kind of medical Skype. But do they feel that doctors can make good businessmen? Not many people have a career in medicine and then a career in business. So the transition has been interesting. Doctors are quite analytical, especially physicians, because they have to consider so many factors in order to make their decisions. Surgeons are less so, they're more practical. They have to act on the spur of the moment quite often. You have to be cool under pressure. I'm more in that category. And I think you, you have to be more like that in business. It's a completely different skill set. So it was more mentally challenging and therefore more stimulating. So that's the reason I currently enjoy what I do. Is it, and it's also, strange enough, almost retirement planning, because I don't plan to retire. Next week, the final five nominees are a food business that mushrooms every night, the software company in the driving seat. Putting the patient experience in the frame. A 30-year-old business that's still developing. And the machinery company that's outstanding in its own field.